Hello and welcome, my name is Mr Schultz and today I'm going to be discussing the Arts Academy Visual Arts Workshop for Term 1. Okay, so as uh, Arts Academy students you'll be participating in a range of workshops throughout the year, preferably one per term, sometimes related to uh, the events, the whole school production, fringe, etc, uh, but other times related to technical development, okay, which in the case of this one is what we're doing. So it's going to be held in Lesson 6 and 7, okay, on th which is this Thursday. Uh, on the 12th of April, and our project is going to be begun during this session, but then continued on into Term 2. Okay, we're holding it in the clay room, which is Art 3. If you're not sure where that is, let me know. And uh, we're going to be doing it, uh, I'm going to be running it with you, and the other Arts Academy students that have uh, selected Visual Arts as their specialisation, and also have brought back their forms, so that's really important too. Okay, and do we really need an excuse to create art? Um, but if you are looking for, if you're desperate to find an excuse, uh, think about you know development of skills, doing things outside of the classroom, uh, using media and materials that you probably haven't used before, and using techniques that are going to be new. Okay, so what are we doing? So we're going to be inspired by the work of Laura Scott, who's a uh, artist from the USA, and Celine Tufel, who's a recent graduate from Royal Lewis College. We're going to be painting with oil colours. We're going to be painting using our fingers and hands rather than uh, paintbrushes and palette knives and tools. And we're going to be implementing uh, impasto techniques, okay? And we're going to be adopting an impressionistic approach and also uh, trying to create that impressionistic as uh, aesthetic to our work. Okay, so this is the process. This is what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to view some work. We're going to have a look at uh, some work that already is out there uh, that we're going to try and be inspired by. Then we're going to analyse, break that down, have a talk about what, what it is, how they've done it and how we could do it. Then we're going to plan a piece, which will involve you going out, taking some photos, maybe doing a bit of digital editing, and then bringing them in on Thursday. Then on Thursday, we're going to briefly experiment with some techniques uh, and you know get to know the oil panel a little bit better. And uh, later that lesson, and then going on to turn two, we're going to complete an artwork. And then hopefully, once we're all finished, we're going to be able to display them to show the school community what we've been doing in the outcome. Okay, so this is Iris Scott. As I said, USA-based artist. Uh, and the thing that's unique about Iris Scott is she, she creates all of her uh, artwork using only her hands. Okay, she uses uh, uh, oil paints, and she, you know, squeezes them directly onto her hands or directly onto the canvas and manipulates them only using her hands. So making her work quite unique. Uh, and as you can see there, uh, often large scale pieces, bright colours, sense of movement, uh, a range of other things. Uh, you can also see a variety of subject matter, so landscapes and, and people. Uh, you can also see animals uh, and still life. Okay, so hopefully that you know, can help you think about what you might like to create on your own. And this is Celine Tufel. So Celine, uh, as I said, graduated last year. She was in my Year 12 art class, and she created this piece, the Guide of Self Discovery, uh, as one of her final pieces. Uh, like Iris Scott, uh, Celine has used oil paints, and she's only used her hands to create this piece which is quite remarkable. Uh, up close you can see all the little textures uh, with the paints you know, sitting on top, on top of the surface and uh, it's really quite beautiful to look at. Maybe you agree. Uh, so we're going to be inspired by these two artists and uh, there's, there's a range of things that they have in common. Um, but what you might be thinking to yourself is that this style is not new. This style is familiar. Where have I seen this sort of stuff before? And so the movement or the type of work you're thinking of is Impressionism. Okay, So I'm not going to go into too much detail about what Impressionism is. Uh, but Impressionism really seems to capture the moment okay, of what's going on in a piece and they do have a tendency to use uh, contrasting and uh, vivid and bright colours and a range of other things that you'll see across the board. Um, but you know, in terms of Impressionist artists, you might be thinking of Van Gogh, okay, still lives, portraits, and you also might be thinking of Monet with his water lilies, you might be thinking of Manet uh, with his seascapes and landscapes, or you might be thinking of Renoir. Okay? Uh, as you can see, the works that I've just put up here, uh, although done, you know, a very long time ago, uh, sort of bear some resemblance to the work that Iris Scott and Celine have been doing today. Okay, so what do these pieces have in common? So, we're looking for their characteristics, and this is the sort of analysis where you're, you're picking apart and you're talking about artwork in detail and trying to understand maybe the motivations behind doing these different things that they've done. Okay, so we talk about colour. Uh, one of the things that you know straight off is the vivid and bright use of uh, use of bright colours. Okay, um, there's often contrasting colours in there. Okay, so you can see with Van Gogh, there's a lot of blues, but then it's uh, uh, contrasted with the yellow. Same with Iris Scott. Uh, the greens, dark greens, light greens, and the blues in the background contrast with the so yellows, golds, and white in Celine's piece. And even in the dog there, you've got the warm and the cool colours bouncing off each other, creating some contrast. 
You also notice the application. Um, you know, in all of these pieces, uh, the application paint is quite unique. There's a, uh, a real distinctness about the way that the paint has been applied. You can sort of see uh, in Van Gogh's, for example, you can see the brush strokes, you can see where he's applied the paint, and just as uh, in Iris Scott, you can see where the paint has been splattered and, and things like that. So it's very deliberate and very obvious how that paint has been applied. There's no blending, uh, sort of smudging, smoothing out at all. Uh, that technique uh, obviously creates texture. So if you were to look at any of these pieces uh, up close and in person, you would be able to see the raised texture of the paint on the surface of the page. Uh, less so with Van Gogh, because he did use brushes, and it looks sort of a bit more flattened, but um, you know, across the board you will uh, sort of see some texture in the paint. You also uh, get a sense of movement, okay? very much so with Starry Nights, swirls in the sky, uh, with Iris Scott's dog shaking uh, the water everywhere. Also uh, with Iris Scott's, uh, it's called Francesca, the one in the top uh, right corner. Uh, where the uh, woman is moving through the field, there is a, a one-point perspective there that's really pushing um, you know, our eyes in that direction, giving it a sense of movement. And I think with signs, to some extent, there is a sense of movement there. You can almost imagine the sort of wind coming through and, and rustling those leaves. But also the light. The light seems to be radiating off the page and, uh, and giving therefore a sense of movement. Um, but one thing that these pieces definitely have in common is really trying to capture the moment. Uh, uh, and that's what impressionism really got down to, was trying to create an impression of a situation or a, a place or a person, rather than just trying to, you know, a straight up depiction. Okay, so that's what they're going for, and that's what we're, hopefully we're going to try and create in our own work. Okay, I'm just going to have a little bit of a look at the video that R. Scott has created. <laughs>
okay, so I'm hoping you find that uh, video, you know, either inspiring or interesting, or at the very least useful to understanding uh, how this work works. Okay, so this is what you need to do. So before our next session on Thursday, uh, I would like you to please take a good quality photo of uh, what you'd like to paint. This could be anything. It's up completely up to you. Uh, you can be inspired by R.S. Scott's subject matter, being, uh, you know, landscapes, still lives, animals, whatever, uh, or you might like to come up with something of your own. Uh, anyway, make sure it's a good quality photo, and I'll go through some tips for that in a moment. I'd like you to upload that photo to Google Drive or directly to your PC so you can access an electronic version of that on Thursday. And I would also like you to print off a copy of A3. Okay? Uh, again, at the end, I'll go through uh, a little bit of that process and how you can do that. And obviously, come. Okay, rook up. Come to Art 3 after lunch uh, on Thursday, ready to create some art. Okay, tips for your photo. Uh, so, as you can see, the photo I've taken here is of my daughter feeding her chickens when she was uh, when she first got them, when she was quite young. It's a special photo for us, and so the, the emotion and the meaning behind it is the reason why I've chosen it. Uh, it's quite complex. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for me, for sure, um, but I do like to set myself challenges in my art making. Uh, for you, though, if, if uh, you don't have to do anything like this, you can do something much, much simpler. Um, it could be a still life, a couple of flowers, a bit of a landscape, anything, anything you like. Um, could be your favourite pet. It really doesn't matter. It takes some inspiration from Celine and from Ira Scott, um, by all means, but yeah, make it your own. So in terms of subject matter, I do recommend that you do try and keep it simple for this activity. Uh, it is a double lesson, even though we're going to continue it on to term two, you don't want to do something that's going to take a really, really, really long time for you to create. Um, like I said, this is, I'm setting myself a bit of a challenge and I probably will work on it uh, over the holidays. Um, and uh, you're welcome to as well if you if you want to. So we can discuss that on Thursday. Uh, but in terms of subject matter, keep it simple. Um, make it interesting, visually appealing. So think about your rule of thirds. Think about your uh, uh, your placement of objects, which goes into composition. So um, again, uh, look at where the objects are placed within the frame. Make sure it's interesting and uh, leaves the viewer on a bit of a journey around the piece. Look for images that have a range of different textures. So I've chosen this one because I've got the feathers in the chicken, I've got the grass, I've got the fabric. Uh, I probably won't even do the uh, the chicken coop. I'll probably leave that there. Uh, and even in the background with the with the puppy and the and the grass, I'll probably even just simplify that to make it a bit more of a blurred background. I'll just be focusing on what's in the foreground of this particular photo. But you can see even within that space, there's a range of different textures that uh, will be good for painting with our hands. And also light, uh, something that was really prominent in the works of R. Scott, uh, impre Impressionism in general, and also in Celine's work is the use of light and the emphasis on light. Uh, so this one's really good because we've got the sunlight coming down, uh, reflections on the arms and the hat, uh, you know, a little bit on the chicken's back and on the grass. So there's lots of interesting textures and lighting in there um, that will work really well with uh, the painting with our hands technique. And colour, um, don't choose images that have lots of the same colour uh, because you're going to lose some detail by finger painting, and if there's uh, too similar in colour, then the image might become a bit muddied, a bit blurred. Uh, whereas this one in particular um, has a, a range of different colours that all contrast with each other and stand out against each other. Also, please consider zooming and cropping your photo. As you can see, the original on the left there uh, is quite. There's quite a lot more going on in it. Uh, there's there's uh, that coop in the background. There's a dog. There's a car all sorts of different things, uh, lots of shadows in there as well. It's just a little bit too big in it, and then it won't fit to the uh, A3 size that we're working on. So the first thing I did was to crop. Okay, so I've cropped the image uh, to make it uh, more of an A3 in terms of dimensions, and uh, and simplified it. Right, I've taken out some of the unnecessary detail and made it a little bit more appealing uh, as a uh, based on the rule of thirds. Okay, and, uh, and then in the last one you can see there, I've gone onto Photoshop and I've used a couple of filters to make the image a little bit clearer uh, for me as a thing, as a as a, a painter um, to to paint. So I can see there that uh, there's a couple of different variations in the pink uh, and the black lines around everything will help me when it comes to to painting for the first time. Okay, so just a bit of a recap. Uh, actually, no. Before I do that, if you're wanting to do this sort of process with Photoshop, uh, let me just show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to open up Photoshop. I'm going to go and find a file. I think that's the original.
Okay, um, so this is a, a already cropped version, so I've just used the cropping tool here to crop the image where I want it. Okay, I've uh, arrived at that there. Crop that. Uh, and then to do the filters, you go filter, filter gallery. And for this particular one, I'm going to uh, do cutout. Now, cutout will simplify the image, break it into block shapes. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, image there, so number of levels 8, edge simplicity 0. If I pull all the way there, you can see it makes it even simpler. Pull it over there, and edge fidelity, I'll pull all the way down to 1 as well. And if I apply that, oh, and the other thing you can do is poster edges, and then apply. And there's the final image there, which will just be a little bit simpler. Now to save that, save as, okay, uh, and there you go. And then that'll be the digital copy. You bring that along with your Thursday, and then print a copy, okay. Uh, I do recommend though that you don't print from Photoshop. That you go into your desktop, find your file. Notes. Okay, and then print from here. That way you can get it on A3 and you can either fit it to the frame or you can leave it as it is. And that will help you. And you bring that, print that, and bring that all in the day as well. Okay, turn one workshop. Just to recap, uh, turn one workshop. Uh, it is on Lesson 6 and 7 this Thursday, 12th of April. The project will be continued into Term 2. We're running it in Art 3. It's uh, going to be Arts Academy students, the ones that have brought back their forms. If uh, you know of somebody that is desperate to do this sort of thing that hasn't brought their form back, can you please encourage them to do so and I'll see if I can squeeze them in. And we don't need an excuse, but we're building on the skills and the uh, experiences that you have in your normal art class to make it, um, you know, to develop further and develop those understandings in the visual arts. Okay. If you've got any questions, comments, or concerns, please email me, send me a message on Sector, or come and see me in my office uh, in the downstairs Melbeck Red office. Okay, and I'll see you there. Bye.